So Adobe updated the Shapes tool in Adobe Fresco, and at first, I was kind of mad about it. I'm not the only person who uses the Shapes tool. Listen, if you don't know about the Shapes tool, I get it. I ignored it for a really long time. It's that shape, it's the thing with the triangle and the circle, and you click on it, and then there's like a leaf, and you're like, I don't want a leaf. Listen, I ignored it for a really long time until I discovered that it had some secret hidden powers and some really cool stuff that you could do and customize with. And then I started using it all the time. I even made all kinds of custom shapes libraries for it. it it's, a, it's a super tool. And I'm not the only one who uses it. There's some people, you let me know in the comments if you're a Shapes Tool enthusiast. If you are, you may have noticed the update. It used to have some options at the bottom when you clicked on it, and those options are all gone. But there's some new things that it can do, and you can still do all the other stuff with a little bit of an extra step. But I think the trade-off is, is worth it. Let me just walk you through it and show you what I'm talking about. I think that'll make a little bit more sense than me just rambling about nothing. Okay, so if you come over to the Shapes tool, you'll see there's a bunch of these just random shapes that are part of the Shapes tool. Where this gets powerful is within the libraries, and there's some default ones, but I think the real the real power comes from making your own custom libraries, which I've done some videos on. I'll link to one of those after this if you're interested in making your own, but I just wanna talk about the Shapes tool updates and how it's different than how it was before. The thing about Shapes tools now is that it's just fully vector. In the past, you had the option of doing vector or pixel, and it was like a little menu that would appear on the bottom, and it would be like fill, erase, select, mask, all that kind of things. But now, when you tap on one of these, you just get this vector layer that shows up here, and you can hit done, and then it's just a vector shape. The thing that I think is really cool, let's say we do another shape here, it makes a new layer, put that like that. You can auto select these things by just tapping them when you're in the shapes tool. And that is a very useful feature that, uh, you know, is something that would be great for other layers in Fresco. But this, being able to just select things and move them around is pretty cool. The other thing that they did was they made it so that you can load a vector layer as a selection which is not something that you used to be able to do. And that allows you to have the same functionality that you could in the past where down at the bottom, there was a separate menu where you could select, erase, and all that stuff. All right, so let me show you how this works using some of these simple shapes real quick. So we just grab one of these bursts. You can change the color as you go. You just have it there and it'll automatically update. You don't have to fill it or anything. It's just choosing the thing and it'll, it'll just keep changing. If we do it again, we tap off of it, we could tap it again and change the color. That's that's a cool feature. It's a very handy and easy to use. So let's go and make a, another shape. Let's do this uh, smaller one and we'll change the color of this just so that we can see what we're doing. And I don't know, we'll do that. So because they've added the Lotus selection for vector, we can come down here, Lotus selection, and then we could just come down to that layer below and erase it from there, just like you could do with the, the shapes in the past. So that functionality is still there. You can still do all of that stuff with the Lotus selection. I talked about how making your own libraries is what really makes this powerful. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you some of mine. So when you come over to libraries, there's some built-in stuff, like they've got this comics one. There's some other ones. I have a bunch of different ones. Some of the ones that I use the most are my vector texture packs because it allows you to bring in analog texture and use it in your work and have it be vector. That There's no other way to get like authentic vector texture. So when, when you tap on this, you see it's already there, ready to go. We can just like change colors and it auto updates. And if you zoom in, you'll see that it doesn't lose it doesn't get pixelated at all because it is vector. So one of the ways I've used this stuff in the past is I will have a shape and I want to like knock texture out of it and I would use it by choosing the shape and then erasing it from the layer. But since we can't do that anymore, let me show you how I would do it now. It's basically the same thing. It's just with the Lotus selection. Let me grab something from, well, I have a vector skull pack. We'll grab a skull from here. So we have this 
skull shape. And let's say I want it to look uh, gritty. I'm going to make it a lighter color and I'm going to put a black background. So I think that's going to be super cool. So now we've got this skull here. And let's say I want to put like a texture on it. So I can come over to the Shapes tool, come over to my Vector Texture 2, find a, a texture that I want to use. We can like quickly preview it by changing the color. Could like move it in, see where we want it to be. Can size it. I think this is nice because in the past it would just be like a, a transparency and now we can just like see it in real time and decide if we want to commit to it. So I could say that's fine and dandy. Let's do done. And we could just use it like this. But if we wanted it to not be a separate layer, we wanted it to be erased out of that image, we would just go to load as selection. And when you're using something like my very gritty vector textures that are like analog textures, they can take like a minute to load because it's vector. So it's all individual points. So sometimes it's a little bit slower. That wasn't too bad. And now we can just go to erase on the layer below. And now that texture is just cut out of the white. So for example, if we change the color of the layer below it, you'll see that through because that texture is now just part of that white shape. So all that functionality is still there. And that like auto select thing, I think is pretty amazing. Uh, it makes it so much easier, especially if you've got a lot of stuff. Like, let me let me make some more stuff so that we can I can show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so now we've got all these different vector layers. We could just come down here and tap and touch that and to activate them and move them around without having to find which layer they're on, which is super handy if I do say so myself. So I feel like that one feature on its own is a great update, and I'm very excited about that. If you are interested in making your own libraries, I, they're, they're so much fun and they're easy to do. You should watch this video because it'll walk you through the process. It's not difficult. And you can make your own shapes libraries that will appear in Fresco that you can use in your artwork as vector art, which is pretty incredible. Good talk.